This is where we're talking to Canadian entrepreneurs, those making an impact to showcase what they're up to so that other Canadian entrepreneurs can learn from their stories and make an impact within their own business. You're tuning into Business with Chris. Hey everyone, this is show number two. And today we've got Erica Rankin on the show and she is a young Canadian entrepreneur who took a passion and turned it into a business. In 2019, she launched Brodo, which is a vegan edible cookie dough, which also has uh, plant-based protein in it and natural sweeteners. It contains half the amount of sugar found in traditional cookie dough and doesn't use any artificial sweeteners. Erica is also killing it on LinkedIn. So give her a connect, shoot her a connect. The product is great. And I was very excited for this, uh, this interview, this chat, but yeah, this is show number two. Super excited that you're listening to this. Uh, let's get right into it. Hey, today we've got Erica on the show. Erica, how are you doing? Doing great. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, of course. Um, I have tried Brodo and, and actually before we jump into that, give everyone a brief introduction to yourself, um, what you do, maybe how you got into that. We can get into that later, but yeah, go right ahead. Yeah. So my name is Erica. I'm based out of Ottawa, Ontario, and I have a product called Brodo, which is a 100% vegan protein infused, better for you, edible cookie dough contains less than 10 ingredients and an average of five grams of plant-based protein per serving. Um, it's a reinvention of a nostalgic treat and it's something that consumers can eat while still reaching their health and fitness goals. Yeah, I, I, I love it. And, uh, we, we've spoken before, uh, briefly about how it came to, uh, how it first came to mind and you started talking about your, your background in know working out and all of that so how how did you get started uh if you want to touch on the bodybuilding side of things too that would be cool uh but yeah tell everyone how you got started in that yeah so i've been in the fitness industry for several years and in 2018 i did compete in several bodybuilding competitions um and i've always been extremely passionate about better for you foods like i would take unhealthy things like sweet things because i have the biggest sweet tooth and I would recreate them and share the recipes on my Instagram account. And it really gained a lot of traction and people really liked it. And I would get a lot of messages asking, like, would you ever sell this? Would I, or would you uh, make me like a custom order and I can buy it from you? And I never really considered it um, until I went traveling and I met a ton of entrepreneurs and uh, just having conversations with them and learning about the entrepreneurial life like really got the wheels turning in my head and I came home and I was like, you know what, how can I mix my passion with a business? And then that's when the light bulb went off and I was like, you know what, let's, let's do it. So that's when Brodo was formed and I kind of saw a hole in the market here in Canada. Um, there's protein bars, protein chips, protein cookies, but there is no protein cookie dough. So I saw that gap and I filled it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's awesome. Um... So yeah, where, if you don't mind, don't mind me asking you, where did you travel? So I went to Southeast Asia for almost four months. So I did Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, and Indonesia. Wow. Wow. Did you, did you go to Bali? I did. I was there for about a month. <laughs> it was okay. really great. So, yeah. Yeah. My, my girlfriend and I, we actually did a, a six month trip and we went to, to China. We went to Hong Kong. We went to. Uh, Bali, we went to um, Australia as well. And you do find that there are a lot of expats, especially somewhere in South, Southeast Asia, like, um, uh, you know, like the, the towns in, in Bali. I don't think there'd be a city. I don't think those would be considered cities. I have no idea. Um, but there are a lot of people that are do, doing work from, uh, you know, from their Airbnb or from a cafe. Or, or things like that. Like we, we met someone that was, um, she was teaching English online to little kids. Um, I, I, I don't know how little, but to, to kids, uh, um, online and you know, she could do that anywhere she wants. And she was just traveling doing that. And then you have other people who have obviously online businesses, whether that's like a, a blog or this or that, and they can, they can do the same thing. So did you, did you get to know, um, specifically food entrepreneurs or people that are 
a little bit more so like that? Yeah, I would say more so like that, like uh, a lot of people who are into marketing and stuff and they can kind of just pick up their laptop and work from anywhere in the world um, down the road. Like that would be the dream. Like when I get this business established, it would be really cool to kind of just like uh, manage everything and kind of travel and work from my laptop. But right now, like in the the beginning stage, like that's obviously not an option because I have to be around and I'm the one doing all the work. So it, that in a perfect world, that would be awesome to travel and just work from my laptop. Yeah, you're a one woman show right now, right? Yeah, that's right. Pretty much. I do. Um, I just signed on. I have a growth partner now. So he's kind of helping me with this next uh, like kind of leveling up with my business, which is really exciting. So I'm slowly starting to build out a team. Wow, that, that's that's super exciting, especially like I think the biggest thing for uh, someone who starts out solo is getting someone to uh, whether it's an employee or someone like, uh, like you're, you're mentioning right now. I think that's super exciting. And I saw actually um, for those that don't know, Erica is killing it on LinkedIn right now. Um, you post every day, right? I do. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, she's absolutely killing it um go check out all of her content she she posts some great stuff and you you r really for um just a day in the life of, a, of an entrepreneur it, it's really good and i mean it's shown with your um it's really impacted i i'm i'm assuming here um your your business because you posted a your chart um your your sales chart right and what it's it's going up up and to the right, which is what every entrepreneur wants to see, right? Yeah. So so you're doing you're doing something right. Um, what do you think has been like the the biggest factor uh, for that growth? I think there are a bunch of things. Um, I guess just bringing value, bringing a product that people really like, and um, just the way that I've ran my business, like I really go out of my way and I make sure to get back to every single person who messages me and engage with people and really build a network. I think that's really important. And then just through my Instagram, like every customer who messages me or comments, I make sure to reach out to them. And even when they purchase, like I really make a point to like say, thank you. Thank you so much for ordering. And I think that has a huge impact as well and like really builds up my customer base and keeps them coming back just because of the customer experience. Yeah, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got I got a uh, a nice handwritten note, which 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 was awesome, um, saying that you were excited for for uh, the podcast and and all of that. I I I really liked the product. I I liked it a, a lot. Um, the which one did I get? I got the cook the which one? Cookies and uh, cream. Cookies and cream potentially. I, it might have been the chocolate chip one. Okay, I can't um, remember. <laughs> I yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I could imagine. I yeah, I think it was the the, the chocolate chip one, and it, it was really good. We actually, um, well, we were eating it out of the tub, right? And we were also we also made uh, cookies out of it, and it actually creates really well done cookies. Like yeah, the the outer shell of it was it had like a nice like almost. Uh, um, I don't know even how to explain it, but it was just really a really good texture for a cookie. So you did a good job there. Um, what What's your most popular flavor? Um, yeah, I would say the regular one, like the OG classic chocolate chip, because you can't go wrong. Like that's like the most nostalgic thing ever. And then probably the cookies and cream one does really well. Mm -hmm. And you also have gluten free ones as well, right? Yeah, I have a gluten-free skew. It doesn't do as well as I'd hoped. Um, I know there are several celiacs out there and they really appreciate that. So I just wanted to make something that they can enjoy too. Yeah, of course. Uh, I think, yeah, I think I think it's good. I know my girlfriend was looking more towards the, um, the gluten-free option. Um, sold out on your website. So you, again, you're doing something right. Um, but um, but yeah, it, once that's, that's in uh, stock, let me know. Uh, so I'll definitely try that one. Um, but okay. So being, being a solo entrepreneur, it, it gets tough at times, right? You, you're, you only have yourself to count on, right? Uh, day in and day out. How long have you been at this and what have been the, the biggest things to overcome along this journey? 
many things if I'm being honest um <laughs> it is hard I'm not gonna lie I launched my business in December of 2019 so just over a year I've been doing this and uh like the first eight months into my business I didn't really have the proper support system in place and it made it really hard for me um because like you said like I'm a solo founder I don't really have anyone to like lean on or like give me the push that I need on those days where everything is going wrong um so that's like the one good thing that people have going who have teams and like other people around them that can help support them so uh i think it was around october september october i got to a point where i was like hey this is hard i don't know what to do now i don't know who to turn to i don't know how to grow my business um and then that's when i got on linkedin and i just started networking with people and it completely changed everything like it made those days where I didn't want to get out of bed so much easier and just having like that network in place and knowing that like everyone's in the same boat and we're all experiencing the same things like it's just really refreshing and it made this journey a lot more easy for me and I wish that I had I had done it sooner for sure. Wow okay yeah that is I think that's a good thing to know because the the LinkedIn uh I mean creating it's a it's creating community right um have you found that on LinkedIn, the community is a lot more um, engaged and helps you out in that way versus Instagram? For sure. Um, I think, yeah, LinkedIn mixes business and social time, which is why I really like it. Like when I go on it, I don't feel as guilty <laughs> as of like if I was going on Facebook because I'm kind of um, making connections and networking and um yeah having that support system in place and everyone wants to help everyone and it's it's really refreshing for sure yeah and so you told me you told me pr uh, previous to this conversation that you joined um these uh 365 uh challenge groups right mm -hmm. so if someone wanted to find something like that where where would they go how would they do that uh, I think you just go on LinkedIn and you can type in hashtag 365 challenge and see the posts um, or they could even message me if they wanted and I can invite them to the group. Basically what it is is just an accountability group and uh, this year like a lot of us really wanted to just um, be consistent with our postings because I think it consistency is key but also like bringing value and putting content out there that uh, yeah brings brings value to others um and then whatever post that we do we just do a hashtag 365 challenge at the bottom and then they all get compiled into this 365 challenge accountability group which is pretty cool and i think there's a couple hundred members in that too oh wow okay yeah that's, yeah that's, that's quite a bit mm -hmm. how long how long did it did it take you to create your product like how many how many how many did you start off with um and how long did it take you to get that initial um those, those initial skews uh ready to go yeah so like what i do is i have like a base uh formula and then whatever flavors that i have i just like add in and like remove so it's pretty easy once i have that um nailed down but i think i started recipe testing in august of 2019 um and i was just throwing stuff in a bowl in my kitchen and kind of like seeing what worked what didn't um I didn't really even understand that food science is a thing and baking is really just science. And I was just, you know, like Googling things and mixing things. And the, the formula has evolved over the past year. Um, I've made like little tweaks and improvements here and there. Uh, but I think about a month for me to get the base formula um, and then for me to actually like launched the business um that was in december so several months later because i was sitting on it and i was so scared to like launch because that's when like shit gets real <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah for sure what what would you give any any tip any advice for someone that is maybe sitting on something um not starting um kind of waiting uh not sure what to do uh do you have any advice for people like that yeah uh because i was that person and i say like if it's something that you're passionate about and you really want to do it go for it like don't feel like you're underqualified or you don't know everything or you're underprepared like you'll learn as you go i literally have no background in business i i'm not a professional baker i just like it's like a hobby i have um i i really had no idea what i was getting myself into and everything that i've 
I guess, learned has been from others and just through trial and error. And you're going to make mistakes. Like it's inevitable. It's going to happen, but it's going to help you grow and be a better uh, business owner. And it's, yeah, just, just go for it. Like it's scary, but it's so worth it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course. I, I'm now, now I'm curious, what was the previous tra trajectory for, for Erica? Like what, what were you studying? What were you looking to become? Uh, yeah, go a little bit into that. Yeah, I went through a, a bunch of different things that I wanted to do with my life. Like I grew up having horses. So at one point I wanted to be a horse vet. Um, oh, I just, sorry. I, I just, I just, uh, finished Yellowstone. Do you know that show? No, I don't. What is that? <laughs> oh, okay. A yellow, it's a, um, uh, I think it's so Kevin Costner, I think is the, is, is the main character there. Um, and he has this, uh, huge huge ranch um and uh he's essentially i guess you would call him a rancher so there's a ton of horses it's like uh, there's a ton of cowboys and that sort of stuff so um so yeah but keep going keep going i didn't mean to interrupt <laughs> i'll have to give it a look uh but yeah that yeah. was kind of the path that i wanted to go down um and then i wanted to be like an equine dentist like a horse dentist and then I went through a period where I wanted to be a cop. And then I went through a period where I wanted to be a psychiatrist. And that was like, I guess, the most previous um, path that I had before being an entrepreneur. I went to school for psychology at Wilfrid Laurier um, in Waterloo, Ontario. Graduated from that. Didn't know what the heck I was going to do with my life. And I started working at a university for a year and a half uh, doing research for gerontology. It was an aging study. Felt super unfulfilled, um, and I would just go into work from like my my eight to four shift, and I would listen to podcasts all day about like starting your own business and like motivational speeches, and then I would just be continuing to like do data entry and answer phones and go home and come back and just the same cycle over and over. And I got to a point where I was just so unfulfilled, and that fire, I guess, that inner fire was extinguished, and I just was going through the motions at that point and that's when I quit and then I went backpacking and then yeah that's when Brodo was born when I got back <laughs> that yeah that's a, that's an amazing story I, I love that I, I just want to I want to take a step back and I didn't even know a horse dentist was a thing yeah they are things yeah I, I co-opt at a, a pretty high-end uh show stable back in university and uh they would have specialists come in and like work on the horse's teeth and stuff and then that's when i got to really see it and i was like this is so cool i would love to do this and then i learned about how much schooling it is and i was like nah <laughs> i'm good <laughs> it's like it's like uh it's was, it was probably like becoming a doctor but yeah. instead of you know then going that route you're uh you're doing um uh, what do you even do for for a horse because um is it it's specifically for shows and things like that uh, it's just like maintenance for their, or do you mean like a dentist, like a horse dentist? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's like maintenance. So they do teeth floating. So like we go and get our teeth cleaned. It's like similar to the horses, especially with like big horses when they have bits in their mouth and you ride them all the time. Like you have to like maintain their teeth. Okay. So bits meaning, so, um, the, I guess that part that you hold, the I, little don't, I don't metal, know. I, I... Yeah. The little metal bar that goes in their mouth and then you have the reins attached to it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So did you grow up in Ottawa or did you grow up in a, a smaller town where there were, I guess, horses more prevalent? Yeah. Uh, so I grew up in Grimsby, which is a town of 25,000 people, I think, uh, kind of near Niagara. Um, I didn't have like horses in my backyard and have a barn, but I did board them at a stable and they were actually Shetland ponies. So I couldn't ride them, but they were, uh, yeah. I what, had what, what were they? Those are their Shetland ponies. So they're like a big horse, but like if you put it in the dryer and shrunk it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, I've, I have no, I, I've, I know nothing about horses. So, um, is it, a, it's not a pony. No. So they're different than a pony. They're a little smaller. Smaller. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. They're small. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that, that's what you would ride. So I wouldn't ride it. Um, I had them and I would show them competitively uh, across Ontario. And then I also had like a cart, like a wagon, and I would hook it up to them and they would pull it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wait, you'd show them competitively. Yeah. So it's like, it's like a, a dog show, but for horses. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That's a good way to put it. Okay. Oh, that's, 
That's I I have no I this is my first time learning yeah. about this. It's, I had I have yeah. no idea that was a thing. So that that's pretty awesome. You so you you would compete in that. You also um I don't remember if you touched on this a little bit, but your your bodybuilding you you competed a little bit there as well, right? Have you found that that competitive nature? What from what it sounds like, you're you're a competitive person. Do you find that that carries into brodo and maybe being competitive with yourself? A hundred percent. Um, I never really thought about it because this was before I even really knew what like entrepreneurism was. Um, I had a friend who like when I was going through my prep and everything, and I was so on point with my workouts and my diet and it was like a full-time job like that was my focus and he was like if you took that discipline and those skills and applied it to other areas of your life like you could be successful at anything and i never really thought about it and uh i guess yeah when i started my business like those skills definitely were transferable um because it's like similar um in terms of like there are days where i didn't want to train there were days when i didn't want to follow my diet but i would do it anyway and then it's like the same with my business. Like there are days when I don't want to pack orders, when I don't want to deliver orders, when I don't want to respond to emails, but you do it anyway. <laughs> so I definitely think that, yeah, like those skills did transfer over to my business and they have really um, helped me succeed. Yeah, for sure. I find that oftentimes when people are, um, I think discipline goes a long way, right? With, with anything that you do. And I think the good thing about doing things that require discipline um and oftentimes those are competitive pursuits as well um you know those things carry into other areas right they carry into other areas of your life so i, I definitely found that for myself i think i'm a very competitive person as well um yeah, ask my girlfriend ask my my siblings i'm i'm one of six uh kids as well so there's always a competitive spirit in there yeah um but yeah, I think I think it carries on um, just really, really well. Um, going back into Brodo for a second, which one's your favorite? And tell us some more ways that you could eat it because you can make cookies out of it. You can eat it right right out of the jar there. So yeah, go a little bit into that. Yeah, um, I would say I have a really, really big sweet tooth and the sweetest one is probably like the pinata party one and it has like uh, the regular like cookies and cream cookies, um, sprinkles, white chocolate, dark chocolate, like rainbow uh, vegan monster chips, like it has everything in it. So that's like my favorite one. Um, and then in terms of eating the product itself, um, I have like little cards that's like an infographic that kind of tells the customer like ways you can enjoy it. Um, as you know, like you can bake it. Uh, I've had people make truffles, which I thought was really cool. They would like roll it into balls, freeze it, and then like uh, heat up some chocolate on the stove and then dip them in and then freeze them again and have like these little brodo balls, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, a lot of people microwave it and then they eat it warm. Um, I would say though, like 80% of people just eat it straight from the jar. They have no shame. They <laughs> want to eat it like that. Um, yeah. So that, that's like the main way that people eat it. Yes. Yeah. I, I, yeah, it's, it's easy, right? Um, you can just eat it right away. And so many people love cookie dough. Like it's, it's up there on most people's, like, I would say at least top 10 favorite things favorite types of desserts or or flavors or, or you know whatever it is um so yeah that that's that's very awesome that 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 is so awesome i'm i i i really liked it again i really like the 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 chocolate chip it was it was so good whoever hasn't tried it which is i mean are, are most of your deliveries um done within ottawa yeah, so I do free delivery in Ottawa and Gatineau, Quebec, uh, every Friday. And then I do uh, flat rate shipping across Canada as well. Okay, okay. And if, if someone wanted to find some Brodo, order some Brodo, give it a try, where would they go? Uh, so my website, www.brodo.ca. Um, and then also, like, if they want to follow me on Instagram, that's Brodo Canada. Okay, all right. And I saw I saw something uh, you you posted uh, on uh, LinkedIn about Clubhouse. Were you joining something? 
Yeah, so Clubhouse, um, if people aren't familiar with it, it's like a real time podcast, essentially, and you can either join in in rooms that have different topics as a speaker and engage in the conversation, or you can simply just attend it and listen. Um, I think if you find the right rooms, there can be a lot of value there for sure. Um, it's like free content, like you get people on there who are pretty successful um, business people and you can literally just sit in and listen to them talk about business and yeah, it's it's free content. And then you can also host rooms. So I've hosted a couple. Um, one I hosted with Caitlin Logue who has 5280 Coffee a few weeks ago and we did a uh, startup horror stories so people came in and we just kind of talked about the different things that went wrong what, what's, your, what, what's your horror story um i have many <laughs> 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 yeah <laughs> uh one of them the one that i brought up was um yeah so when i first launched my business i didn't have a ton of capital to work with i didn't really have anywhere for cold storage and i didn't i had a roommate at the time so i couldn't keep my cookie dough in our fridge it was not a big fridge and didn't have room so what I did was I kept my cookie dough in my car all winter uh, with the heat off. I drove around with no heat and I didn't want the cookie dough to spoil. And I don't know if people are familiar with like Quebec and Ottawa, but it's really cold here. Like today it's like negative 14 degrees. <laughs> so imagine driving around with no heat on all winter. <laughs> but um, yeah, neg negative 14 degrees Celsius. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, but I got to a point where it started to get warmer and spring was coming and I was panicking. I was like, I don't know what to do. I have nowhere to put my uh, cookie dough. So I was trying to figure stuff out. And um, I did eventually get a fridge, but before that, um, I didn't know what to do with my product. So I brought it all into like my uh, condo and I, I let it sit for like half a day or something. And um, a store had ordered that was, this was probably like, I don't know, two or three months into owning my business. And instead of me like looking in the jars and looking at like the state of the cookie dough, I just bubble wrapped it and then I shipped it to a store and all of them were spoiled. But they didn't look at the, um, they didn't unwrap them and look at the, the state of the cookie dough either. They just shipped them directly to their customers. So all these customers got all the spoiled product and I, my email was blowing up and this was like the first store I ever got into. And I was like, oh my God, what did I do? How am I gonna fix this? Um, but honestly, if you have good customer service, like you can pretty much win them back, um, treat them right. Um, you're human, like a lot of them understand it. Like they knew that I was a startup. They knew that I'm a one woman show and this is all new to me. Um, so I didn't really have too many issues with that. And I did send out replacement jars. So initially upfront, like that was a cost for me, but it was worth it to keep them around as long-term customers. So you, what, what you did to, to solve that or to, to help with that situation with you, you sent them a, um, a new jar, right? And, um, I'm assuming like free of charge, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm sure you, you followed up through like email and things like that, made sure everything was okay. Um, okay, that, yeah, I think it's important to just like take take ownership and again, good customer service, that that goes a long way, right? It does, yeah. It, it goes, yeah, it, it's, um, it's um, you know, pe people appreciate it. People appreciate being taken care of, like they didn't, they feel like they didn't um, uh, lose something by, by you know, buying your product or something like that like they're they're gaining something right so i uh, i definitely think that's important are are there any other horror horror stories that sticked out yeah um stuck another out? One, yeah another one that wasn't too long ago it was in the summer um so i rent a commercial kitchen by the hour and i pay um x amount of dollars to be there for four or five hours and uh, I go in, I bring all my things and then I clean up and then I leave. Um, I'm not responsible for any of the equipment or anything, but I went in and um, did my thing, cleaned up. I was getting ready to leave and putting the equipment back that I used. And uh, someone was in the kitchen and they had a food truck and they had a hose like pulled through the kitchen. And uh, the mixer that I use is on a stand with wheels. So I, instead of me going around the long way to put the mixer back, I was like, oh, I'll just roll it over the hose. So I grabbed it and I went to go roll it over the hose and the wheels popped off one by one. And then um, it started to fall onto me and it's like 200 pounds. It's a pretty heavy thing. And uh, 
the guy who was in the kitchen with me, he was outside and I forgot his name. So I was, I couldn't yell for his name for help. <laughs> and I was holding this mixer and I was like, I don't know what to do. So eventually my knees just gave out and it fell onto this other um, table and he had to get another guy to help him lift it back on. And uh, yeah, that was broken mixer. And then um, I wanted to make more product like a few days after that, but because the mixer was broken, someone had to come in and fix it. So that put a delay in my orders. Just like little things like that come, they come up here and there and you just have to learn to roll with the punches. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, that that doesn't sound like a little thing that yeah. that was, you know, that, that those mixers are heavy. Those mixers are, are, are very, very heavy. So, uh, well, I mean, thankfully you're okay. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> like, yeah, that's, um, was the cookie dough okay? So this was afterwards <laughs> when I was done. I was literally, my car was packed. I was ready to go. And then... Yeah, that's when it all everything came crashing down literally. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that I I I'm just yeah, I've I've moved those things around before um because I grew up uh my dad he owns a a B2B uh, bakery, right? And so I I know how heavy those things are. There it's it's no joke. It's it no is. joke. No joke. It's, it's <laughs> not at all. Um but yeah, so so Okay, getting started, right? Did you start renting out a, a kitchen right away or what was that process like? Yeah, so it was just kind of me um, understanding what is allowed in Canada because different countries have different rules. Um, at first, I was like, yo, I can just totally use my own kitchen and make it in my own kitchen and I'll be good to go. But that's not the case here. Like you have to use a commercial kitchen that gets regularly inspected by Health Food Canada. So uh, before I even moved to Ottawa, because I moved in um, October of 2019, and then I launched my business shortly after in December, um, I was just doing research about the different uh, kitchen rental spaces that were available here. Um, and then when I, when I moved here, I did a tour of it and kind of got a feel for it. And it's pretty cool because uh, there's so many different type of, types of food entrepreneurs there. Like there's a woman who makes soaps, there's a Lebanese food company that works in there, um, all these different businesses. And then yeah, me with my protein cookie dough. So it's, it's a good diverse mix of people for sure. So you, you need a commercial kitchen to make soap as well. I, I guess so. I'm not sure how it works for like body products like that, um, but I, I would think so because you're selling it to uh, consumers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then getting your, your site up and all of that just simply through Shopify, right? Right. Right, okay. And how's, the, how's that process like getting, because uh, you, when, when you start up on your own, you have to get the product you have to get, uh, learn about how to deliver. You have to learn about, you know, getting a, sh uh, a, a, a website up. Um, actually, tell us, you know, everything you had to do at the beginning and what was, what was the hardest thing that you didn't think would be that hard? Mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, so I think just understanding how a business operates and what you have to have in place to have like a healthy business. Um, cause yeah, my background's in psychology. I have no knowledge of businesses. So what I literally did in the summer, I Googled, like when I came back from my trip and after I started experimenting and I was like, okay, hey, this is the idea I have. This is the logo. This is the brand. Like I'm doing this. And, uh, I literally Googled business workshops near me. And then I drove out to, uh, Brantford. They have like a, a business resource center and completely free. Like you don't have to pay anything. And uh, they went through a business plan, gave us a template for that. I went to a couple other workshops on like cash flow, uh, projections, financial projections. So kind of just having all of that in place and a solid business plan, I think is extremely important because if I didn't have my business plan, you're kind of just, I don't know, you're, you don't really have direction and you don't really have a vision or goals. Um, so I think it's really important to have like short-term goals and long-term goals. And then as the year goes on and your business grows, like continue to revisit that business plan and like adjust things as you need to. Um, so I guess like, yeah, the hardest part for me was fully understanding like what a cash flow chart was and um, understanding that um it's expensive to start a business like it's a really big investment and there are so many little things that come up that you don't even take into account like liability insurance for example that was something i was like i need to get insurance but like if someone needs my product and they get sick and then they sue me like 
you know, like you have to have everything in place and set yourself self up for success. So I think it's just covering your basis and knowing as much as you possibly can before you actually dive into it. But also not knowing stuff is okay, if that makes sense. Because <laughs> some stuff you learn as you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Getting started, right? Yeah. Getting started, getting going, get a, getting uh, started going, just learning as you go. Um, but definitely getting into those, um, uh, finding those resources, that, that would be helpful for a lot of people without a, a background and understanding how maybe basic accounting works. Mm -hmm. And you know, again, getting that liability insurance because you don't want to, you know, put yourself at any more risk than you need to. Um, and, and getting all those things, um, all those things set up. What tips would you have for um, someone that is, let's say, they have started their business, they are looking for for ways to grow it and um to be able to do this full time if they're not already or uh to just you know bring on that first hire and things like that what would you recommend they do to to i guess uh help their business grow at this point in time uh yeah so i would networking is key like that was I was in that boat not too long ago in August and September. Like I was working in the business instead of on the business. And it was just a cycle. And I didn't want to be stuck in that cycle any longer because I saw my sales, they were increasing. And then all of a sudden it just kind of went flat for a little bit. And I was like, okay, what do I do now? How do I get to the next level? So that's when I got onto LinkedIn and I just started networking with people. And uh, knowledge is power. Like be open-minded, be curious and uh, reach out to people and ask for help. Like don't have an ego. <laughs> I think that's what one people like it gets in the way of them um, being successful because they're scared and they, they want to pretend that they know things. But in actuality, like we're all in this together and we don't all know everything. Like even people who are like 10 steps ahead of you are still learning and growing and evolving just at a different stage. And they were once at the stage that you're at. Um, and something that has really helped me too is people who are big successful founders in my space, like in CPG, I was so intimidated by and so scared of. And even before I messaged them, I'm like, I'm like very small. I'm a small fish in a big pond. Why would they give me the time of day? But they were literally in your shoes and they have empathy and they want to give back because someone did the same thing for them. So I think just fully using the resources that are out there and uh don't be afraid like reach out to people they're there to help and they want to help and you'd recommend doing that through things like linkedin yeah linkedin is like i can't say this enough it is a game changer and it's helped me in my business like grow tenfold like it's it's gotten me a lot of things and i can't recommend it enough it's a great tool wow that, yeah that's amazing definitely definitely hop on linkedin if you haven't already um and is that is you posting content right it's not brodo posting content correct it's me yeah i'm everything so i mean i i guess i am brodo but it's me <laughs> i'm the face behind brodo <laughs> yeah what's your favorite type of content to put out there um i like to do a little bit of everything like my main goal is to kind of show people like everything like storytelling um one company that does this really well is midday squares and uh, they kind of show like everything, the, like the hardships, the highs, the lows, everything that comes with being an entrepreneur. Like, I think there is often a misconception about this lifestyle and that it's um, lavish and that that's not what it is. Like it's hard and there are some like very, very hard days. And yeah, just being realistic and transparent, like that's my goal. So um, yeah, with like a lot of the content that I post, it's transparent and honest and showcases that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's done very well for you, right? And um, it's it's great. It's great. I as you know, just uh, just for for me myself, I I enjoy um, uh, reading what you post. Um, you also post stories and things like that. And being real, putting those stories out there, people learn more about. I mean, what it means to be an entrepreneur. You you relate to other entrepreneurs, right? um you people get to know the person behind the brodo brand right so i think i think it, it's great all, all in all and 
and keep doing what you're doing because it's um because it's it's great it's great and um and yeah so you you sell direct to consumer you sell b2b is there one route that you prefer uh or over the other is there one route that's performed a lot better for you um go a little bit into that if you don't mind yeah um so yeah i do have my shopify website and i would say like 40 percent of my sales come from direct to consumer and then uh the other 60 come from wholesaling because i am in a couple stores but the i guess velocity is a lot higher there um like one store in montreal they order continually and then sell out continually. Um, but I don't think I really have a preference. This year, um, I am ramping things up and I am hoping to get in stores across Canada by the summer, which is really exciting. So like retail is definitely gonna be um, a big focus for me cause that's a volumes game. And I wanna create brand awareness as well because I think one thing that really stops people from purchasing my product is the cost of shipping. So they add the product to their cart and then they get to the checkout page and then they abandon checked out, checkout cause they're like, oh, $9.99 for shipping, that's a lot of money. And I haven't tried this product yet. And you have to kind of build that trust with the, the customer. And I think if they saw my, my product and on a shelf in a store and tried it that way they're like okay i actually really like this product like i would go online and order it so yeah or or keep going back to the store yeah right? that's uh, true to, too to get it yeah <laughs> yeah to get it with their their grocery shopping or or whatever it is are you are you going to be into because i know you're in a um a health oriented um store in in, in bolton right uh, are are you looking to be more in, into those grocery stores or um, those supplement uh, type of stores? So initially I was thinking of focusing on like Popeyes and like Supplement King and those kinds of stores. But I'm realizing now like my product is gonna do really well and like um, health food stores, like the Farm Boys and like, like those types of um, grocery stores or just in like the regular grocery store, but in like the natural value section, like next to similar products of the like, like, uh, like refrigerated protein bars and the kombuchas and like similar products like that. Yes. Yeah, so we, so we, we might see you in organic garage or something like that. Yeah. Or, that's, or even whole, a whole foods down the line. That's the game plan. Yeah. That's the game plan. All right. If, if, if anyone wanted to, uh, uh, reach out to you, learn more about you, where would they go? Uh, yeah. So they could connect with me on LinkedIn if they like. Um, Eric Rankin is my name. And uh, email me erica at brodo.ca as well. Okay. And to find Brodo, that was brodo.ca or .com? .ca. .ca. Okay. Perfect. Well, it's been awesome, awesome speaking to you. Um, is there anything you'd want anyone else to know about maybe Brodo uh, that we haven't touched on so far? uh yeah maybe just keep an eye out in your local grocery stores um in late spring slash early summer and uh yeah this this is an exciting uh time for my company and we're we're working on a lot of things so yeah big things are coming <laughs> all right perfect well we'll 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 stay we'll stay in touch and once you release that stuff i i'll do what i can to put the word out there um so yeah again thank thanks for being on the show erica i really appreciate it. it was super super interesting lord i I learned a lot i learned about horses as well <laughs> um so so that yeah it's been a, it's been a great conversation I, I really appreciate this yeah thanks so much for having me it was it was definitely a good conversation and i appreciate it